So we have covered the architecture of the star ADC. And that looks like uh, the following. <clears throat> Signal comes in, sample and hold, comparator, control circuit, and star. So you let me know what is this. DAC, 4 bit still. B3, B2, B1, B0. So all these, and this VREF, and all the transitions we summarized in the table. Um, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cycles and um, B3, B2, B1, B0, and here's comp. So comp. <clears throat> so cycle one, we have 1, 0, 0, 0, and you are getting a comp, which is called A3. And the second cycle, you have to plug in A3 here, and 1, 0, 0, like this, and you got A2. And A2 has to be plugged in to here. You got this, you got A1, A3, A2, A1, A1, A0, A3, A2, A1, A0. And you're done. So this thing here, all the cycles, are being done or completed by which block in this architecture? Where? The entire thing or only part of it? Yeah, you do need a corporation from the comp, right? You need a comp to plug in all the things. But this is the logic, this is the algorithm, has to be implemented by a bell circuit. So all these things are being shifted to the right, like these numbers are being shifted, right, and being plugged into somewhere. You do need something to do it. And it's all done in here, in this block. So we are going to talk about how do you design a star block. That's the most complicated part in this architecture. So keep in mind this behavior, right? So what you actually need to do, you have to draw it out and uh, look at the wires and all these flip-flops first before you finalize the circuit. So this is what we need. You have to know what you need first. What this, what this actually doing is just uh, have a initial state first, which is one zero zero zero, and then according to what is a, a, a comp, comparator's output is, is plug in this number to here, and then shift all the other numbers to the right. So first, you are going to need a sequencer. So this is on the top. So for uh, five states, you need a five flip-flops. And for example, the, the set is negative active, negative, negatively active. So when you give a zero, it's going to treat, it's going to trigger that set function. And definitely a Q or Q bar. And here's reset.
and you short the set pin to all these reset pins for the following ones, but the first one is being shorted to set. Right. So quick question, if I give a zero to here, what's the result at Q? At Q's. So set bar means if I give a zero, it's going to set this flip-flop. So what is Q? One. What about Q bar? Zero. And this is being shorted to reset for the following ones. So when I give a zero here, all the following ones are going to output what here? Zero, right? Because uh, zero is going to trigger that reset behavior. And because it's a, a Q bar will be inverted to Qs, so one zero 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 here will give you zero one 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 here. Is that correct? Okay. And then you need another five of the same copies. Theta clock So here's a comparator's output. It's being fed into all the D pins. Yeah, that's right. And I'm going to make the connections from Q bar to set keep in mind not Q Q bar so when I give a zero to here I'm getting zero one 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 here and because it's being shorted to here so I'm getting zero one one, one, one here as well. So what about the Qs? What about the Qs? If I have zero, one, 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 one here, so one is not triggering the set operation, so only zero does. So what's the Q here? Is that one? Yeah, so you got one. Doesn't matter, what are they? So at the very beginning, it should be zero. Because there was nothing in there at the very beginning. And <clears throat> how that can be zero? Have a reset, unfortunately. So if we call this pin is reset, so this is being shorted to these pins. So reset. 
It's the same voltage node. So when this is zero, these are all being reset by getting zeros. What about this one though? You'll see from the schematic, it actually doesn't matter because whenever you set this one to be zero, you are getting a one here. And this will be one as well, but doesn't matter, we only use Q. That will be B3, that will be B2, B1, B0. If you make everything to a block, you're actually getting, you know, the, the start block from here. Use this guy. Let's put everything to a box. So these are the output feeding into the DAC, right? And now let's take a look at it, how this works. It's going to be on the homework to let you uh, describe the operation of this one. <laughs> okay, is this getting started? Is this ready? Is this already initialized or not? How can you get it, get this started? Or make it ready to be started? You need a 100 for the Bs. All right, do you have 100 for the Bs? Yes, 1000. Zero, zero, zero. We're not using this one. See, I don't have any connection to the queue here. So these are the four bits. You need the five flip flops because these are five states. You need to use the five registers or they are flip flops. They are also called registers. So they can hold the values for the five states. So it's ready to get started. So what's next? What's next? So these all have clocks, right? At the next rising edge, if you assume these are rising edge triggered flip flops, we're, we're going to get into the structure of each flip flops pretty soon. So never mind. Just remember that these are all shorted to one clock resource. So at the second rising edge, what's going to happen and why? And if I, am I missing anything? So let me know what you want to short to D. Sorry, I just missed the, all the Ds. The Qs should be shorted to the Ds. The next cycle, when the next cycle comes, it's going to send the Q to this Q. Is that correct? Because this Q is shorted to the D. Same for this one. The Q is shorted to D, so it's a that's a data. At the rising edge, it's going to send whatever here to here. So it's a shift register. It's shifting the data to the right for by one bit. Is that correct? So initially, you have a one here. And when shifting this one to here, to here, to here, you are shifting that one to the right. And what you want to do when you are shifting that one to the right? What you want to keep as that original position? You want that, that one to be what? Since this has been shifted to here. So this, the next cycle, the value here will be determined by this guy. Because this one is being shifted to here. So what you want this point to be? Zero, it's just grounded. So it's always zero. Whenever this is being shipped to the to the right, it's always pumping zeros to the sequence. Right? Just giving zeros. But only that single one being shifted to the right, but all the other ones are zeros. And this is not even the the, not the last stage. This is just the first stage to provide 
So if you imagine, right? So this thing on the top is doing nothing but just uh, having a one being shifted to the right. And that's it. And fill, filling in zeros in the front. All right? So, and that thing will cause uh, the, the digit to be shifted here on the second stage. Because if you have a one being shifted to the right, and you are getting zeros being shifted to the right for the Q bars. They are inverted to the Qs. Is that correct? So now in your mind, you want to imagine that for the Q bars, you have O ones, but there's a little zero is being shifted one by one to the right. Make sense? On the top, it's a O zeros, but little one here is being shifted. For the Q bars, O ones, a little zero is being shifted. So that zero starts from here, will set this guy and give a one here, right? And for the, all the other ones, the Q bars are sh being shorted to these ones. They are not setting this because this is, you need a zero to set it. So they are doing, they are not doing anything. They just uh, like memory, whatever, whatever, whatever the D is. Uh, whenever there's a clock, it's going to send that D to here. But it only setting the resist register whenever this zero arrives, that register. Because you got a zero being shifted to the right, so it's actually setting every single one, one by one. And that's how this one is created for the Bs. Is that making sense? But you don't want to plug in zeros here since you don't know. They can be cups, but not zeros. So the circuits for the flip flops, how do you set and reset? Do, do you mean how we did that or why do we? Yeah. Yeah. The second one. Oh, the fifth set. You are going to see that pretty soon. Yeah. We need it here for the second stage. Right? We're almost there. So now we just did this job, right? One, 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 one. That's how we can implement it. And that's how. So now let's look at the comp. How can we plug in the comp? So we need another connection. So this Q has to be shorted to the clock in the front stage. Same for this one. So here we go, we need it. That's why. Because we need a, this guy's Q to perform as a clock for the first stage. How that works? Because the comp is being shorted to where? Comp is being shorted to where? To the Ds. To the Ds. So they are being ready uh, to be used as the input. Because you want to send it to the queue. We need uh, these ones to be the queues. The comp, the comps need to be placed in here. Right? That's how we have to do it. We have to connect them to the Ds. But how we trigger that transmission from here to here. So if you look at the the queues, because we have um, zeros being shifted at the set pin. So literally what's going to happen is ones is being shifted at the queues. Right? We have to just set that, right? Ones. And whenever you got a one, it used to be zero, but whenever you got a one, there's a rising edge. Boom. We'll send it to the clock as a rising edge. Whenever the queue becomes a one, whenever the next queue becomes a one, it's sending a clock to the front stage of the flip-flop 
to trigger that transmission from D to here. So that's how you can plug in that comp to here. So let's look at the first cycle, all right? Right after this one zero 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 stage state. Okay, so here's zero. Is this going to trigger that transmission? No, it's not a rising edge, it's a zero for the clock, so not active. However, whenever this one is being shifted to here, you get a rising edge, because it's shorted to the clock, the rising edge is gonna trigger that one to be plugged into here. So we got a comp being plugged into here. So you are wondering, hey, this comp is being shorted to all the other Ds. Is it being, being transmitted to all the other Qs as well? Is it? It's being shorted to all the Ds. Why is it only happening here? Only, only this data is being sent to the Q, but no, not the others. Because only this guy got a rising edge. Since you are moving that one to here. So there's a rising edge for this guy, but not the other ones. So it's a memory. It's not changing. Make sense? All right. Now, another cycle. The next cycle. It's going to happen. So this, the one was here, right? The one was here. And the next cycle, one will be sent to here. Then what's going to happen? There's a rising edge triggered here, and the comp will be plugged into here, but not the other ones. So if you have A3, now you got A2 plugged into here. So on and so forth. It's just following the same concept. So you can plug in all the comps to the right location. So that's the SAR logic. It's the second problem on the homework. You need to draw the block, describe the operation of this guy, explain it, uh, but maybe not build it in all these spice. We'll build it uh, at some point in the semester, but not right now. Any questions? Smart design, right? <laughs> all right. So here comes the question. As an engineer, we need to know how to design the flip-flops, not just directly using others' flip-flops. Okay. And the flip-flop needs to be reset and set. You have to have these functions, not just like simple flip-flop in the textbook. So we had What is this flip-flop? Where is R, where is S? So first, what's the name of this flip-flop? That's our flip-flop, where is S, where is R? Yes? Mm -hmm. Level triggered or edge triggered? Level triggered. Where's S? Where's R? Hmm?
It's actually called J K flip flop. <laughs> so top is J, bottom is K. Jack Q B. The inverter, inverter of the uh, no, sorry, inverter, inventor of integrated circuits. Won the Nobel Prize because of that. Jack Hubie. That's why his name is on this schematic. J K flip flop. J K. So you know, similar J K S R is the same thing. And just think about it. What is that? What what is J? What is K? Or same as what is S? What is what is R? No difference, right? It's not being inverted. So if this is S, this is R. This should be S. This should be R. But we just have a different name. It's J and K. It's just sending whatever here to here in a different way. So this is a level trigger. This is edge triggered. Why is edge triggered? Why the edge can do the job? It's rising edge or falling edge. How can you tell? So if you want to set this little S here, temporarily stored at this point to Q, you need this clock to be high or low. High or low to send it. High. If you this need this need to be high, you need this part to be low. It's being murdered. Rising edge or falling edge? I'm talking about clock. Not an intermediate clock here. Falling edge. This needs to be low to make this high to send it out. So at the because the falling edge triggered, so at the rising edge, what this guy does. What this guy is does at the rising edge. The rising edge happens here. It's a little high, very short period of time, high will enable these two NAND gates and send S to here. So this S prime, for example. And store it there. Why is it going to store it? Why is this line here can store that S prime temporarily? Correct. So when this is high, this is low, got zero, we got one, one here, it's a memory. So whatever S is going to change is not affecting the results because it's being temporarily holding, being held here at this point. So, so it's like rising edge is going to sample the D and falling edge is going to trigger the change of the Q. So it's going to sample here and send it at here if this is a clock. Make sense? And <clears throat> If you search online for a set and reset flip flops, since we need an edge trigger, because edge trigger is more accurate, is re more resistant to the change of the D, it's keep changing, so you don't want to make errors. You just sample it and it's definitive, that's the answer to the Q. So you need a actually edge trigger flip flop in a, in a practical setting. So people was trying to add a set so three input NAND gate and reset to the bottom three input NAND gate, trying to set and reset it. And this won't work. Why? I'm saying like whatever is changing in the front, I'm gonna set it whenever this is zero zero. Or when stat is one set bar will be zero and zero is going to kill this nine gate and give you a one here it is setting the kill right it is setting why it's not going to work because when q is being set q bar is not being reset that's a problem is that making sense so one here for example you Give a zero here, right? And it's gonna be one here definitely because it's gonna kill the NAND gate. So one will appear here as well. And because you don't know what is this guy, and so whatever you put here, you just cannot just like directly give a zero here because you don't know 
what is the line here? What is the data at this point? So you can definitely set Q, but you cannot reset Q bar. Same for reset. When you are resetting Q bar, you cannot make sure Q is being set. You need these two to be inverted to make whatever here happen. Right? Because when we are setting this guy, we want to reset these following one at the same time. So this is not a good design. That's why the companies are not using this structure. If they can use this structure to make their flip-flops, it's going to be way easier. They don't have to design a um, complex structure for it, which burns more brain cells. So the question right now is, what is a good design for the flip-flop? And I have it for you. Oh, it's here. <clears throat> so that's directly printed out from the TI Texas Instruments IC chip data sheet. I just stole their schematic. The only one that works for our purpose. How that works? Uh, it's complicated, right? So the first question is, so disregard the whatever here. Let's just look at this part. What is that? Only the output, what is that? SR latch, okay? So what is R, what is S? Where is R, where is S? Top is R, bottom is S, right? But you're asking like, there are three inputs. So what are, what is the third input? It's a set and reset pin, right? So when we are uh, trying to uh, go through the logic, we just ignore it for now, since we are not setting and resetting, all right, for now. Let's just go through it. So the first question is, if we can have both R and S to be zeros? First question. R equals to zero, S equals to zero, what's gonna happen? If both R and S are zeros. You are killing these two non-gates, getting one ones, right? Is that possible? If you have a zero here, same as here, zero, it's being shorted. It's gonna kill this non-gate, give a one here. So is that possible to have zero, zero? No. Second. R equals to one, S equals to one, and clock equals to one. Is that possible? One, one, clock is one. No, clock is zero, sorry, clock is zero. If clock is zero, before, right before the rising edge, right before the rising edge. If clock is zero, definitely it's gonna kill these two nine gates and give you one once. It's gonna happen, it's possible. Number three, if R is one, S is one, clock is one, is that impossible? Or possible. This needs some analysis. So if R is one, S is one, and clock is one, clock is 
clock is one, theta, you've got one here, because one is here, one is here, and this reset, we are just ignoring that for now. We're not setting a reset in the circuit, just assume this is one as well, so just ignore it. So one, none, the data is getting what? Data bar. So data bar will be sent to here. <clears throat> so this becomes data. Is that correct? One, one data bar. This becomes data. And if you look at here, you've got one here, one here, that's what one here. And because this is data bar, so this line going up, this is data bar as well. Set, ignore it. So one, none, the data bar will be data. The data will be sent to here. Since we assume clock is one, so clock is one here. And since we are assuming set, Bar, right reset bar is uh, zero, uh, is one now, so we ignore this input from NAND gate. So data, data NAND one will be data bar. So it turns out that R has to be data bar, S has to be data, so they are inverted. So that's why R equals to one, S equals to one, clock is to one is impossible. Is that clear? So that's the first three questions you need to know. And you'll see why. But now let's just lay it out in that way. Second. So why is the rising edge triggered? Remember the star clock, we need a rising edge trigger to flip flop. So why is this guy's rising edge triggered? So which means why at the rising edge, it's sending data to Q, right? That's it. So when <clears throat> clock is zero, so before the rising edge, right? Before the rising edge, clock is zero, right? So when clock is zero, what are R and S? When clock is zero, what is R, what is S? Ones, right? So R equals to S equals to one, no problem. So what's the state for this latch? You've got one, one here, it's a memory. So memory means whatever D is changing is not changing the result. Make sense? So first we know that there are only a few different states. And now we know that zero is going to hold the SR latch as a memory, so D is not going to be sent to the queue. Right? So second. When clock is at the rising edge, so it's actually a very short period, uh, period of time, you got a logic high. Um, so what's gonna happen here though? S is data, R is data bar. So remember we just uh, look into that Possibilities. Here. This is impossible when clock is high. So the R and S has to be different. And this happens, the clock is zero, it's not at the rising edge. So at the rising edge, the clock just passed 
the 2.5 volts threshold voltage actually is a, vo a logic high. So during logic high, this won't happen. Is that correct? And this won't happen uh, as well. Now mention this. So S and R has to be different. Okay, so let's assume that when you got a logic high here, it's a high, it's a high, and so high will be sent to, let's see, previously, when it was zero, you got a one one here. So this one will be sent to here and you are getting a data bar. So data bar will be sent to here as well. Right? That was when it was at zero. At the rising edge, at the rising edge, this one just directly being changed from zero to one. So this becomes what? So when this changed from zero to one, the output becomes, it changed from one to what? When it was zero, you got a one. And now it's being changed from zero to one. And this will be changed from one to data. Is that correct? Is that boring? <laughs> okay. So data, data, Data bar, data bar, and at the very beginning it was one, and one is being changed to when it was when the clock was zero, it was one here, right? So one will be changed to what? No, one is here, and when when one. Wait, let me see. Okay, so it was one, so you are getting data here. So data here. At the very beginning. And now, clock is changing from zero to one. So this one is being changed to data bar. So at the rising edge, at the rising edge, data bar will be sent to here and data will be sent to here. If, if data is one, if data is one, so this becomes one, this becomes zero, right? And this zero will kill this nanke, give you one here and one is being sent to here. You have one, one, and getting zero. So if theta is one, and you are setting the queue. So just treat theta as that S or J, right? So when theta is one, Q is one. You are sending the data to the queue. Great, that's what we wanna do. If you flip data to, so if data is zero, data bar is one. The same analysis, you can see Q will be zero. You're always sending data to Q at the rising edge. So another question, so when after the rising edge, clock is being stabilized at high, high voltage or logic high, is this going to be resistant to the data? When data changes, is that going to change the queue or not? So we just saw that when clock is zero, it's not going to change the queue because it's a memory. Data is not doing anything to the queue. But when clock is high, after the rising edge, it's, it's just keep, uh, keep at the uh, voltage high, logic high. Is the data going to change anything at Q? So we can talk about that next time.
definitely the answer is not, right? But why, right? So we can talk about that on Friday. 